been having problems with my finances since the moment I arrived here. And it goes a little something like this. My neck, my back. My bank. Take a quick trip home. My bank. My neck, my back. Take a quick trip home. Really, really bad. It's very easy for a predator to take advantage of Chris. Are you calling Jamie a predator? Yes. <laughs> you serious? Awesome. Towards the end of the season, Chris left Columbia for a few days, and then she didn't come back. Jamie and Chris had just gotten married, and now it seemed like that marriage was already over. But after five months of strange excuses for not coming back, Chris randomly ends up returning. And surprise, she had yet another excuse as to why she was in the U.S. for so long. I was supposed to be here a month ago. I had family issues that I had to stay in Alabama for. What excuse number is this? We had the motorcycle court excuse, the no job excuse, the no meds here excuse, and now this family issues excuse. Her lies, I mean excuses, are not adding up though. She claimed early on to have serious neck and back pain, along with narcolepsy, but then says contradicting statements like that she was doing hard labor for jobs to send Jamie money. She was acting like she was just so miserable in the US working, but then says things like this. It does not seem like it's been five months at all. It really doesn't. This time has flown by. All that intense hard labor to send Jamie money just flew by, huh? I don't think that anyone watching this show believes that Chris was really in the U.S. for five months working. And Chris has yet another excuse for why she stayed in the U.S. for so long, which wasn't surprising. But I was shocked at this point when both Chris and Jamie were saying that they were back together. I was hoping that Jamie kicked Chris to the curb. But instead, we have this awkward reunion where both of them seem pretty uncomfortable. I was starting to wonder if Chris had only returned because she was contractually obligated to by the show. Because I can't think of any other reason for Chris to come back and for them to try so hard to not look awkward together. Jamie did try to lighten the mood for them, though, with a surprise for Chris. Jamie surprised me with a furry onesie for her to wear to match my furry unicorn onesie. No, it's not that. It's not what you think. They just did a TikTok dance. Chris was also saying she felt bad about missing Jamie's birthday again. So the next day, she surprises Jamie with a private pool. Entro, me siento super emocionada, me siento muy contenta, veo la decoración. <laughs> and she does a straight up neck dive into that pool. What happened to her neck and back being so bad that she needed major surgery? My neck, my back. It isn't until they cut the cake that Jamie finally addresses the elephant in the room. You know, the whole Chris not coming back for five months thing. But Chris doesn't seem to listen as she eats her cake. She doesn't even really look up until Jamie says that Chris isn't helping her with money like she said she would. Chris makes a face like Jamie said something insulting, but she is the one that told Jamie not to worry about money and to quit her job. Jamie should have never trusted Chris though, because now she is stuck with a rent that she can't pay. And when she tries to confront Chris about it, Chris loses it. I'm trying Lower to talk. your voice right now or oh. you're... She says that she had to stay in the U.S. because her son went to jail, which actually ended up being true. My son got into some trouble with some drugs. I had to be there to help him. But Jamie claims that that problem with her son happened way before her birthday, and she is really just upset that Chris ended up leaving for five whole months. And when Chris returns to talk this out, things only get worse. How much did I tell you that I could spend on rent? Four zero zero dollars. And how much and did you get the rent was? Five zero zero five, dollars. Five zero. Now we have shifted to Chris being mad that Jamie got an apartment that was $150 more a month than it should have been. Chris has lied so many times that I think this is the only argument she has left or remembers. And that amount, $150 more in rent, is what she uses to end this marriage. I'm done with this bull****. I'm done with you being selfish and all about yourself. So now she says she's done and is moving out. She walked into this acting like a sugar mama and now is leaving over $150. Find somebody else to pay your bills. In this next scene, I don't know why Jamie goes over to the car. I think it's to get her stuff and go to another car. But their arguing at the car here makes Chris get physical with Jamie. Oh, what are you? Stop! Get away! Stop. You. Stop! Chris just keeps getting more unhinged and I don't see her as a victim at all. I see Jamie more as a victim here. And no, Jamie should not have trusted someone she had never met in person. 
And no, she should not have quit her job like Chris told her she could, but she didn't do anything to Chris, and she definitely did not deserve to be shoved by this witch. Chris has some serious issues, issues that are not just medical issues. She treated Jamie horribly, and after shoving Jamie, I really hoped that she would get called out in the tell-all for how crazy she has acted. And really, it wouldn't be that hard to call her out. As soon as she arrives, she's already on her poor me bullshit. I have been extremely sick the last few days. If anything, Jamie, I'm glad you got out when you did. Because at the tell-all, Chris seems worse than ever. I have been violently ill, throwing up. In airports, oh, God so it's just love been... you. At least some of the cast seems to see through it. My 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 neck, my back, my my everything. Like my neck, my back. When the tell-all does get to Chris and Jamie's story, we find out that these two have not spoken since their fight at the pool. No, no. Which is probably a good thing. I hope Jamie realizes that she needs to completely stay away from Chris. Don't be like Liz and just keep going back to garbage over and over again. As they show the clip of Chris shoving Jamie to the cast, I notice something quite irritating. Chris gets a chance to answer why she was shoving Jamie, and her explanation? Well, frankly, it's a stupid one. I black out. She blacked out? What? How is that even an okay answer? Jamie wasn't even in her face, and Chris wasn't physically defending herself. Chris had to sit up out of her seat to shove her, and no one is saying anything in Jamie's defense. Why? Why is no one saying anything? How can Chris be a victim with this footage they have? I don't get it. Instead, the questions move to their money issues. How much money altogether have you sent Jamie? In total, on the whole relationship, about 10 grand. I don't believe that Chris sent her $10,000. But I do believe that she spent close to that on activities they did when she was there. They had that glamping thing, the wedding, randomly buying knives, and that private pool. But Chris was making herself out to be the sugar mama. So I doubt at that time that she complained about spending that money. Jamie says Chris sent her more like $1,000, and I'm guessing most of that was used for their rent. Acá tengo la única transferencia que yo recibí de Chris Foster, 746 dólares. Jamie also says that she has debt because Chris only paid one month of the apartment, and I'm sure she does. Chris showed up, they leased an apartment, and then Chris left and Jamie had no job. She probably had some debt from that. I never wanted that apartment. We looked at several apartments that were affordable. And another lie. Why aren't they playing back clips from when Chris first arrived to Columbia? I wanted space. I wanted an American kitchen. So that meant moving. They just let Chris talk in circles instead of showing clips that could easily clear this up. Chris was the one that wanted the bigger apartment, and now she just keeps jumping to different subjects to blame Jamie for anything she can. Found out she was cheating on me for the second time. I left work mad and upset, and I flipped my car. Like saying that Jamie claims that she didn't know about Chris's health issues when she did. I don't think Jamie did know how bad Chris's health issues really were. Jamie had a very surprised look on her face when Chris told her about her neck issues. I don't think Jamie knew the full extent of Chris's insanity until she arrived in Columbia. This is just a mess. And I don't even think Chris can keep track of what she's talking about anymore. I would still help her move to oh America today. I would, I would sponsor I'm her crazy. to come here. Como me metí con esta loca? They moved to Jamie's cheating that happened before Chris even moved to Columbia. And I don't know why they focus on this out of all the other things that happened. This cheating happened before they even started filming. I'm tall with Chris and over for the woman Texas and then we said it's over. I know on those day. Jamie admitted to the cheating and Chris still went over to marry her. I think this is when Jamie realized that TLC is not on her side. They are on Chris's side for some reason. They barely dig into Chris's multiple disappearances and they jump back into Jamie cheating again. Did you cheat on Chris twice? No. Three times. Three times. No. Yes. Only one. My guess at this point is that they came to some sort of agreement with Chris to get her to come to the tell-all. Maybe she said she would leave if they brought up certain things? I don't know. But the show is definitely not on Jamie's side. And she barely gets to explain herself when she's accused of cheating more than once. I want to know from Jamie, why did Jamie cheat? Because she disappeared all the time. I think if Jamie did cheat more than once, that Chris would have brought it up during their pool fight. Chris clings on to anything that makes her look like a victim in all of this. Anything. So that cheating would have come out before this. And unfortunately for Jamie, she doesn't have anyone defending her on this tell-all. Where are her friends that witnessed Chris disappearing in weird behavior? 
Instead, she even has Debbie come after her. I see in this relationship between Chris and Jamie, there is a giver and there is a taker. I don't think that Debbie is someone to take seriously when it comes to getting scammed. Please ignore the woman slowly roasting in this pink feather coat. Chris is the giver, Jamie is the taker. No, Debbie, Chris is a user, not the giver. This woman is not a victim and she put her hands on her wife. So please, everyone watching this, keep that in mind when Debbie makes this next statement. It's very easy for a predator to take advantage of Chris. Oh, Debbie, as entertaining as you are, that was a dumb thing to say. You and your ex-boyfriend that is young enough to be your grandchild should stay out of this one. Osama wants to remind you to subscribe to the Kibbles channel. If you don't, he will appear in your window and read you poetry. Touch me, hold my bones. Are you calling Jamie a predator? Yes. I don't agree. I don't agree either. Jamie, you are not a predator. No one should be calling you a predator. And someone should have really defended you. I'm actually surprised that you didn't storm off. Especially since it was Debbie that said that. Es imposible que todo el mundo me esté juzgando por algo que pasó mientras esta señora estaba desaparecida por 20 días. And Chris. Oh, Chris. You suck. And I don't agree with cheating, but Jamie cheated on you when you ghosted her for a month. And you, Chris, have done even crappier things that no one is focusing on. Su exnovio me estaba enviando fotos de ella desnuda, teniendo sexo y demás. Eso nadie lo dice. So after all of that, Chris has cheated too. And on the next episode, we get to hear more about that. Chris, do you have receipts for how much you spent? It was on a bank account I no longer have. I really hope that Jamie will get more of a chance to call out Chris. Because this tell-all handed this entire situation very strangely. Did TLC not realize that Chris had what seems like drug issues going on when they got her on the show? They're avoiding the topic altogether and it's just weird. And said they are just letting Chris play the victim in all of this when she's not the victim. Let me know what you think of this. I am disappointed in how they are handling Chris and Jamie's story. Hopefully Jamie can get more time on the next episode to expose Chris and hopefully someone will actually defend Jamie. My next video though will focus on Danielle and Johan. This feels ridiculous. He throws like temper tantrums. I don't see him changing. So it's like I have to leave him. It seems like they are close to ending their marriage, which is pretty crazy. We will have to wait and see what happens next on part three of the tell-all. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye!